So recently we hit 30k over here on the channel and I didn't really have a video plan for it, but I did kind of want to do something in celebration of that because ever since I was a kid, I really wanted to get to 100k so I could get the plaque. Thank goodness that my goals were a bit more realistic because I can't imagine getting to a million on just FGO, but getting to 30k being 30% of the way there, I think is a huge milestone. You know, every 10k I think is a large step towards the dream. And because of that, I wanted to do some type of video. And I was like, well, what do I like really do? Like, who do I like in FGO? And I was like, oh, I really like Morgan. But I'm like, well, if I'm gonna make a video on Morgan, it's gotta be something a little bit different. Like I can't just do some clear or something because that's not really my style. I like doing more discussion type videos on the channel. And I had a series about buffing and helping or fixing some servants in the game that I really wanted to kind of pick back up and thought, well, I could use this video, even though it's, you know, a bit of a gag, because let's be real, Morgan doesn't really need a buff, but we're still going to treat this as if it's one of the other videos in this series that I would like to do to kind of gauge interest from you guys. And I get to yap about Morgan. Seems like a win-win for me. You know, you guys get a, I would hope to be an interesting discussion video and maybe even a better series to follow right after this. And I get to talk about my FGO husband. So strap in, get comfortable, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let's jump right into this. As per usual for more of these discussion videos, I do have some notes, so I think I'm a bit more structured in this video. But let me just say at the very beginning here that I don't think Morgan is anywhere near getting a buff, and even if she was going to get a buff, I would think they would give it to our Juna Alter first. Not that he needs it, but as, say, the more senior servant, I would assume they would give it to him, then give Morgan something. And at least for our Juna Alter, though, I can think of some things that I would like to see him get in the future that shouldn't make him too much more busted. But Morgan's a very interesting servant to try to have this discussion about because Morgan, you got to remember, is one of those servants that we thought, and especially I thought, I think I was not wrong about how good she was, but I definitely think I overhyped her a little bit too much because I thought she was going to be like the third best unit in the game. She seemed so insane as both a DPS that could also be a support and that would also meld very well into challenge quests. The real bummer with Morgan wasn't that, well, she wasn't good in challenge quests and she wasn't good for farming or she wasn't a good kind of pseudo support. All of those things were very true. It was the fact that her damage wasn't as high as we thought she was going to be at because she's a berserker. You expect them to do a lot of damage. They're super effective against pretty much everybody in the entirety of the game. But as somebody that has NP1 Morgan on the JP side of things and somebody that has an NP5 Morgan on the NA side that is now about 116 2k 2k fold, her non-power mod damage is really, really bad. It is nothing super great. I mean, at least if you get her to NP5, which, you know, just it's that easy. Just simply get the servant to NP5 to have what I would say is very average or mediocre damage, right? It is acceptable to get across the finish line, but definitely going to want to have somebody like Oberon in the back pocket just to ensure that you're actually getting those clears on various free quests. Now, not as big of a deal if you're going into challenge quests, because like I said earlier, as a CQ servant and as a pseudo support, she functions very, very well in those regards. But that was the one thing that kind of took away from her being the ultimate all rounder. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to do something to make her a better farming servant, although that is something that I'll bring up later. But if you look at everything that Morgan does, it is hard to think of something that you would want to give her. Her first skill is a very well-rounded skill, allowing herself to not only get attack, but lower the defense of all enemies, which technically, if you bring another, say, pseudo support DPS, that is increasing their damage twofold as well, because they're not only getting the attack buff, but you're also lowering the enemy's defense. And God forbid we then get a servant that has power mod on somebody that has lower defense, that'll just age very very nicely or somebody that can compound the effect of defense down kind of like say evil curse or toxic or severe burn where it maybe amplifies the effect of defense down you know who knows if this could get better in the future but it also comes with at least a self 30 percent battery now she does technically have a 50 percent but to those of you that have actually used Morgan in a lot of different stages know that sometimes you do just donate the second skill to other members of your party, especially if you're doing the immortal team comp, which if you're not aware, is the team comp of Morgan, Merlin, and Artoria because they all complement each other rather well. The two traditional supports are giving Morgan pretty much everything she would want, more damage, more crit damage, 
even more access to her own NP and extra survivability that she does appreciate as a Berserker. Even though she already has her own, it does help ensure that she's going to make it through the fight. And what Morgan could do is increase their overcharge for their already very strong NPs, making them even stronger. And sometimes when you find yourself in a bit of a pinch, she can donate this 20% NP to one of them to ensure that they get their NP whenever you need it, while also giving everybody extra NP gain, which is very, very nice, seeing that you're going to be spamming arts cards all over the place. They just got even better. And it also really helps that she does not have to be babysat by Merlin and Castori because she does have her own method of survivability. There are some servants that are really good DPSs but have basically next to none or no type of survivability buffs on their own. So they really do have to be babysat by the supports and sometimes that can cost you a run. But Morgan at least having her own guts is not only nice that she can take care of herself, but it's layered survivability because Merlin gives you invincibility. Castoria mainly gives you solemn defense, even though she can also give you a targeted invincibility on her third skill and Morgan has a gut. So it's not as though you're wasting different survivability buffs, say, Maybe you need to give Morgan the Threat Against Humanity buff, but then also want to go for the AoE Invincibility because there's an enemy NP coming in. While you're still getting all the benefits of Castoria's third skill, it can feel a little bit bad to have to waste the survivability if you need it later, but thankfully because Morgan already has her own survivability, you can kind of get away with wasting that. And it also gives her very nice things that I would say help her out more in those CQ standings, giving her very good star weight to ensure that she does not have to fight Merlin and Castoria or Koyan, Skaya, Oberon, whoever you're bringing alongside her for those stars and giving herself a 30% crit damage buff, which you would think would not be enough as the gold standard is usually 50% crit damage, or if you're a real heavy hitting crit damage user, you probably have a 100% crit damage, or maybe you have a way to stack up to 150% crit damage on say an NP like Zenobi Arcanus, but Morgan surprisingly is able to do some pretty nasty crits with only 30% crit damage and that I attribute more to her being a berserker. She's always super effective and just has very good self buffs in being able to lower the enemy's defense but also buff her own attack. And if you have an NP1 Morgan and you're a bit more reliant on say face cards in the farming scene and maybe don't you see it as much in the CQ scene, maybe you don't use her as much over there, but if you ever have to use face cards, you know that her crits definitely can come in clutch, especially because she does give herself the additional 15 stars to kind of bottom out whatever stars you might have from 20, 30 or other skills that you might be using. It also has an interesting effect to lower all enemies attack and crit chance by 20%. That is something that I would like to kind of circle back to later because while it is a very nice buff for her to have, I do think it is one of the weaker things that she has that maybe is intended to protect her a little bit as a berserker and you know make her take less damage but at the same time she's a berserker you know 20 percent attack i don't really think is going to be saving her from any you know offhanded crits or nps here but maybe it does allow her to survive the odd attack every now and then as long as you back her up with extra survivability like say merlin's np to give her some sustain her own NP is aging quite nicely. I mean, when it came out with the man power mod, that was already very strong as there are a ton of servants that have the man trait and there's a ton of random free quest enemies that also pack the man trait. So whenever you run into a free quest or a challenge quest that has anybody with man attributes, she absolutely dunks on them. To give you a bit of a comparison, she hits around as hard as Arjuna Alter when she has the man attribute power mod up, if not even a little bit harder. The same could be said with the round table or the fey power mods that aren't nearly as good because they're a bit more restrictive but again if her man attribute allows her to hit a bit harder than arjuna altar this lets her hit about the same level as arjuna altar does so the damage is still very very strong you're just not really going to see it all that often and unfortunately there's not a whole lot of overlap if any overlap at all between the man attribute and then the round table or fey enemies in fact, I believe the only one that does have that overlap is Saber Altar as a round table knight that is also man, which nice, if they bring back the 1 million boss battle against Saber Altar, then sure, have at it, you know, absolutely obliterate her with Morgan, but I think most of the Fey and the other round table knights are all earth attribute people which is a bit unfortunate for Morgan that she really does not have the same ability of a lot of these other servants that have multiple power mods to double dip into them. Take for instance, you have someone like Melusine that has the chaotic and the earth attribute power mod. That has a lot more overlap than these specific traits. It is a little bit unfortunate, but hey, what are you gonna do when they give you three different power mods to cover a bunch of different bases? We still take it. 
Obviously, her NP also does the overcharging the party stage by one time for three turns. Very, very nice, not only for herself on a subsequent NP, getting that buff to her own power mod, but also buffing people like, say, your Merlin or your Castoria and giving them extra stars and more importantly, even more solemn defense. Normally, I would rag on her having the random curse on her NP over here because I'd say that random damage over time doesn't really mean anything. But if they're going to give us more fights, like, say, the high damage reduction crabs that we fought during the Tesla Fest a couple of months ago, then this could just be a very convenient thing for her to have in the back pocket. And we actually got a newer version of Honey Lake, the CE that gives you burn power mod in the CE called, and man, this is a mouthful, the method to walk on the stars. That doesn't give you the same pierce invincibility that Honey Lake does, but it does give you a 50% start engage and a 25% curse power mod, which happens to work rather well with Morgan, not for farming very much because her curse does not apply first like some other servants, but it can be very nice going into certain CQs, especially if you maybe want to try to min turn it and you need that extra little bit of damage. So that's great and all, you know, talking about everything that Morgan's got, but if I were to throw a buff her way and I was to try to help her out and not be a super broken servant, but definitely be a bit better, I think there are a few ways to go about this. For one, you could obviously just buff her NP. Don't change any of the effects because they're all already very good as is. Unironically, I think the only thing that they might do on her NP is the Himiko thing where they give it the double overcharge, but even then, I think that's a bit ridiculous and super overkill. I don't think that's needed. I think if you do just give her the buffed NP though, where you raise the damage scaling, she'll get a bit more respect from people because her damage won't go insanely higher than it is right now, but it will be at a much more commendable level than it is right now. In that same vein, you could also apply, say, another damage buff onto her second skill. This worked wonders for Gilgamesh at the beginning of the year when they gave him the extra NP damage buff. You could do exactly that for Morgan's second skill. Although the reason I don't necessarily like it is that might make it targetable, which means it does take away a little bit of the utility of targeting one of your supports to give them the extra NP. So if they do something along those lines, I would appreciate if the NP battery would still be targetable, but then maybe it's just a 20 or maybe even 25% NP damage buff for the entire party for three turns. If you want to keep it in line with the same NP gain rate that the second skill has, even though that's kind of supposed to just be a parallel to Castoria's second skill, I think something along that line could actually make her a bit better because it gives her another damage type and it makes her play a lot nicer with Oberon. But that's more just for her being better when you go into farming because typically if you're bringing Morgan to a CQ, sure, you can use her to min turn things, you can use her to burst down enemies, but she's particularly known for the fact that she is very good for the immortal team comp. And so sure, she could do extra damage, but that's not really what that team actually needs. What I would like to see if they were not going to do something in regards to her being able to farm a bit better is some way to take advantage of this lowering of the enemy's attack, defense, and crit chance. I like the whole idea that Morgan as a servant and like who she is has the ability to debuff the enemies rather heavily, but it doesn't seem to be super impactful if that makes sense. I mean, she's getting extra damage from the defense down and technically more survivability from the attack and crit chance down, but I would like to see something more compounding on that. Either maybe she raises those values up to like 30% to where it might be a little bit more substantial, or if you wanna go really crazy, 40%, or with what we've seen from Alco and Alice and even the free to play over on the JP side of things right now, they have very weird and unique skills. If they're willing to put in that work for more of these other buffs, as I don't think we've ever seen a servant get a buff that then gives them a unique trait or something, but maybe we could actually see something like I brought up earlier, where if say a special trait on skill one is up, the effects of debuffs are doubled or something while that skill happens to be up because I think that could be very nice if you want to balance it out a little bit and maybe you make it only live for a turn or however you would want to balance around it that way. Again, I don't know how exactly you would limit it to only buffing things for a turn, but maybe it's a one turn buff on the first skill that is just kind of tacked on there or a one turn buff on the second skill that gives it that buff. So you could also plan for, I guess, more burst turns with your Morgan as well. And also be like this turn, we're going to be a lot more set because we have, say, a 40% attack down on all of the enemies. I think stuff like that could be very helpful. Obviously, we could also just give her bigger crit damage, which I'm never going to say no to. I think that is always very, very cool to get. But I really did try and rack my brain with this one a lot because 
I wanted to show a little bit of how the series that I would like to bring to the channel on kind of fixing old FGO servants or servants that have kind of just been left in the dust, how I would kind of handle them and how they'd be structured a little bit. Morgan is very hard to do because she's already a very strong servant, but there's also a lot to talk about in regards to the entirety of her kit to make sure that it's like, no, really clear that this servant does not really need any help. But a lot of these other servants are a lot more basic. It shouldn't be this 15 minute plus video, which is also, you know, good for you guys. And it's more bite sized and, you know, easier to digest and easier for me because my voice starts to hurt after doing a video this long with all the random takes that just don't make it into the video as well or stuff that I have to trim out and cut. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. And I would also like to say, you know, for these videos, I would like to see comments on what you would give whatever servant is being talked about in whatever video in question. Especially, I think this one's very interesting because it's trying to buff a servant that's already really, really good that feasibly doesn't need a buff and trying to do so in a way that doesn't make her broken on the spot. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for 30k. I hope you enjoyed, uh, I don't want to call it like a gag video or anything, but it might seem as kind of like a bit or a gag to some people, but I would like it to hopefully lead into another series on the channel, especially during some of these slow periods. I think these are very fun to have. So let me know those thoughts in the comments down below, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, late guys.